we're going to connect the backup camera to this reverse light. That will trigger the backup camera to turn on so you can see behind you while you're backing up on the LCD screen. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mount it to my license plate holder. Push this all the way down. And this one actually has a backup camera, but this one doesn't record. This one uh, records and it has infrared lights too, so I can see it better at night behind me. And you can adjust it up and down as well. And you want to drill right through the plastic. Go ahead and run that cable right through the hole. Okay, so make sure you put a drip loop right here at the end so the water and the moisture doesn't drip into the camera. So now I have my drip loop on so if the water and the moisture built up on the wire it'll drip off the wire and not straight into the camera. If you just use this pry tool and just pop off the plastic rivets just like that and they come right off. If you have these, these are a little bit harder to remove. You're gonna need a screwdriver and it pulls out. Here it is. Like that. And then you want to zip tie it to the wire harness right here. Remove this bulb, just twist it and pull it out. It should be shining. Yep, and it is. So th these are definitely the reverse lights. And sure enough, we are getting almost 12 volts. So that is pretty good. Now if I turn off the car, then it should uh, turn off. Or if I put it back in park, it should go to zero volts. So I'm gonna use these splicers and it acts as a bridge, this right here bites into the wiring, this metal plate, and it bridges the connection. Put the black wire to the black wire. Makes sense, right? All right next, we're going to press down on the metal plate so it bites into both wires, bridging the connection. Now I'm going to connect the camera to the rear view mirror cable and you want to line up the two arrows so there's an arrow here and there's an arrow right here line up the arrows and slide it in all right so i'm going to put my foot on the brake put it in reverse all right this backup camera triggers and this backup camera triggers put it in park and it goes back to dual screen or if you want to choose um, dash cam or backup camera only or dual screen I like I prefer and you should twist on there we go it's locked in so I'm just gonna double check my work I got the water sealant so the moisture doesn't get it inside my car I'm gonna adjust it facing a little bit downward uh, and I got the drip loop right here so the moisture doesn't roll off the wire and go straight into the camera all right, so let's see if the back is recording as well. Hit playback, normal. And here's my front camera recordings and my back camera recordings. And this is me doing the install right here. Should turn on everything. I'm gonna put the car in reverse. And there it is. So that is a pretty good height. You want to aim it downward so in case a kid throws a ball across the street or you know they're chasing after a ball, you can see that kid chasing after the ball. You don't want to aim that camera, backup camera too high because there's no reason to see the sky. All right, so let's put it back in park and you got the dual camera mode. So everything's working great. So if this video was informative and it helped you out, give me a big thumbs up. If you know anyone interested in getting a dash cam or backup camera for their car, or even you want to monitor your kids driving, this is a great product for that. Go ahead and check out the links in the video description below for the product. And if you know anyone that's interested in this, go ahead and click on the share button below, or share this video to them, help someone out. And if you want to subscribe for more how-to videos like this, 
click on the subscribe button right here or down below. And if you want to check out my other installation videos, check out this playlist right here. Thanks guys for watching.